Welcome, Welcome to Shade in the, the City. I'm your girl, Trees. It's no. And today, y'all, we are picking up with the finale. I said, okay, this is, we TV, we can do this. We can talk, <laughs> we, we can form a long-term relationship working on this. <laughs> okay, y'all are my type of people. So this is the finale of, look, finale of uh, Love During Lockup, season six, episode eight, or as they called it, episode four of 58 40 whatever anyway y'all we we here and it's the closure of love during lockup and i will say i don't know about y'all shade squad but i am um happy to those that jumped in the comments and suggested and happy that i finally decided to come over to the dark side because it's very enjoyable um so and i look forward <laughs> and i look forward to love after lockup because trust and believe that will be on the rock side. <laughs> Um, but yeah, guys, so Shade Squad, all of our new viewers, please, please, please make sure that you hit that like button coming in. And that subscribe button. And y'all, let's jump right into it because it's a lot. And let's get shady, y'all. said that she didn't feel like it was a lot and she felt it was rushed i wish she would have said that in the beginning but anyway so here we are um and we're starting off with jade and chris uh she's down on the beach in naples florida looks real nice girl <laughs> i heard about naples okay yeah <laughs> so um and you know she's waiting for chris's call she's nervous because she realized there are more cracks in their foundation than she thought so she brings up, you know, him bringing up everything in his name and, you know, brings up him getting a will or a post snuff. And that is the only way that she is willing to stay. So she lets him know, basically, look, I need to protect myself and um, yeah, do it or don't. But if you don't, you can consider yourself single. I said, well, that's a nice way to, you know, give an ultimatum, lay it all on the table. He tries to reassure her that, you know, just because things aren't in her name doesn't mean it doesn't belong to her. And she brings up um, how he threatens to take those things away when they argue. Chris doesn't feel it's fair. And Jay tells him it's not fair. She has to wait on him for seven years. At first, he tries to push back and it's like, well, you know what? Now you got me questioning because now you acting all funny about this money. Are you going to leave me once I get out? Are you planning to divorce me? He said, I am. If you don't do this. Right. So I thought, okay. Then she flips it on him and says, the fact that you're being so hesitant to put my name on these things makes me concerned. And so then he basically agrees that he's going to get the paperwork done and, you know, to prove to her that she can trust him. Um, and Jay says she can see herself spending the rest of her life with Chris. I said, and, this girl know how to get stuff done. Right. And hopefully, you know, they'll have some kids once he gets out. And Chris is also hopeful that this will be his forever relationship. And then they had this very small part about. Yeah, I think she was feeling a little frisky after that. She started I, I guess so. Too. I look, I would be sending pictures too. So. Yeah, right. She's like, I got what I wanted. She, so she Jay shared. Like, what she said, I'm going to send a picture of my uncle at the, uh, in, in Times, Times Square. Square. So I was, like, was looking at her like, what? And then she shares that to get nasty pics of her to prison, uh, to Chris in prison, she'll take a picture from Times Square because, you know, there's so much going on, so many billboards. I said, this is actually very smart. I don't know if I would have put this on TV. And guess what? And now I was going to say, and now that she said it on TV, you about to shut everybody down. Right. There, there was one where one girl um, on the show, she said something like she does like a screenshot of, but you know how when you do a screenshot, how you have the roll of other pictures at the bottom? So it would be in the role of the other pictures at the bottom. Oh. And yeah. Mm -mm. Mess it mm -mm. up for everybody, Jade. Mess but anyway, so she likes to go put her naughty bits on the uh, billboards so that he can uh, zoom in and look at them. And I said, smart. I ain't mad at you. And as we know, Jade is waiting uh, still to be added 
to Chris's deed and he gets out 2024. So I'm sure that we'll see them again because Jade is trying to keep her own paycheck because she doesn't know if she can count on Chris. Oh, Nell's his favorite. I'm sorry, go ahead. You said her own paycheck? Yeah, from uh, we. Oh, from we. Okay. Yeah. I was about to say from Shane. That's why I said that's why I said that's why I said they'll be back because she's gonna make sure she keep her paycheck. Mm. Her and her TikTok money and her We TV. Oh girl. <laughs> don't be surprised if love after lockup once they are there you see her not with chris just saying so still get some of his money oh so andy and Brittany. apparently Brittany hasn't been able to sleep because she's getting released the next day she's super duper excited and they've been counting down for this day Andy and his son barry are packing up to get ready for Brittany's release and andy let him know that he plans on giving her $1,200, which Barry doesn't think is a good idea. I said, here go, Trees. <laughs> Let me uh, make sure I get my cape on the right way because I know oh, she's going to do it. Shut up. I know she's I mean, going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> she was, and um, he was like, you know, since uh, she had a drug problem previously. And, you know, basically he said, you know, he's not worried about it. Uh, she's not that person anymore. And lets him know that he spent about $6,000 on her. So he's like, how the hell? Yeah, I love Barry. Uh -huh. You know, Barry's very, be why, what do they call it? Wise beyond his years. He's because a snitch. Why, Barry is a snitch. <laughs> that too. But why is it that this very young child has more common sense than a gr very grown, mature? Who? No, no, no. On top of that, who is who is previously a cop and know how they work? That, but listen, he needs love. Oh, yes, okay. He does. So, this boy went to room, called his sister. Okay, no, no, can we talk about hold on before you go there? Can we talk about how he tried to equate being addicted to food and um, emotionally eating to being a drug? Yeah, I was, look, I was like, I was like, it ain't the same. Uh, uh what's his boy name again now you have named Barry him. Barry so Barry runs to the room gets on the phone with his sister Destiny and snitches his daddy cold clean out talking about some girl I got the tea you know this man about to get his girl some money and he been giving her money I'm like yo Barry he's in the next room like yo he had no chill so of course Destiny's pissed off because she don't already like the girl and she don't like the situation. She mad at her daddy. You know, she she on 10. Um, but she's like, you know, she really don't see a future for them. And she said she hopes that the girl don't run off with his money. But if she does, it will be a lesson learned for her daddy. So so be it. Mm. So they have the car stuff with all types of balloons and gifts. And they're about to drive to Hartwell now. It, this didn't make any sense to me because if you can't get these goddamn balloons in the car, how you gonna get this girl in the car? Where who's she riding with? It was real interesting. Well, anyway, so Brittany called him and let him know that you know he's gonna have to pull like over on the street or whatever and not, you know, close to the jail because they're gonna pull her up in a van um to release her. So, you know, he let her know that he got in touch with Gracie and he's excited for her and Barry to meet. He's just hoping that she's in better spirits this time. And when they got to the hotel... Because we all know the, Gracie was not feeling him. She was not. She even looked totally different this per this time. I, I thought she was a totally different person. I didn't I did too, her. yeah. I didn't recognize her. Um, so they get to the hotel and she does actually seem like she's in better spirits. She's at least talking this time. Um, but more than likely, I think it's just because she's excited that her mom is coming home. She, I think she, that's she, it too. Give a damn less. And she does see uh, um, Andy making some effort. So... <laughs> <clears throat> he's basically just ready to knock out, get ready to go get his woman in the morning. Um, he is a little bit nervous. He said that, you know, she's been clean for two years. But if an addict wants to find a way, they will find a way. You know this. So, okay. Right. Um, and basically, but that will be the end of them. But it will be too late because she'll be on you know, addicted to something all over again. And basically, we says that they'll continue their story on Love After Lockup. So, Renika and Asanta. 
Rest in peace, Asanta. Now, Asanta tells production to say that he called his auntie. Um, or no, he tells the production. No, he, he said called- it was. He said it was his auntie. Oh, he did. He did he, no, yeah, he said they asked him who it was, and he said that was my auntie. Oh, okay. Um, and then basically she's handling it. So then he calls Renika to let her know that she's supposed to be getting the Apple Pay with the money to get him out. But apparently the amount that Renika got was not enough. They were short. So Asanta says he's not worried about it. Renika's, you know, going to take care of them and money. And he's not worried about her taking it because, you know, they've been dealing with each other for so long and she done held him down. So, you know, Renika has to go out. get Because ch- he knows she wants that good. And, right. And get a <laughs> money order. Um, so she can go and get him out. And she's mad that she has to dip into her daughter's college fund so that she can get the rest of this money for Sansa. Now, y'all know I was literally just cursing her the TV out. But, you know, it's Renika, so I can't say that I'm surprised. Now, she's extremely excited that he's about to get out. She's sitting outside pacing back and forth. And she calls the aunt to let her know that, you know, he's getting released. <laughs> You, you know what I thought was hilarious? What? I said, see, this is how the universe works. He said on the phone while he was in there, I just don't want her to call Renika's phone. And look at what the hell happened. Renika called the girl. Right. So, well, because she, she thinks she's auntie. So she then, um you know, she lets the aunt know that, you know, he's getting released very soon. And then asked the woman on the phone if she's his auntie. And she says no, that uh, she's Asanta's girlfriend. So obviously she's so like she said, no, no, no. I said Asanta. She was like, girl, you didn't hear me correctly. She said, yeah, I know. She said, the the citrus. The citrus. She called her by his government. I thought. And uh, obviously, she's like, you know, oh no, it could have been me because I would have blew up the spot, right? And um, so. She, you can tell she used to be in a side chick, though. That's what it was giving. This, uh, she was giving pick me shit. Because I'd have been like, how you his girlfriend and I'm his girlfriend. I'm right here trying, to, ready to pick him up. He coming back with me. I would have, listened. look, I would have had all the smoke. I would have had all the smoke for her. And then after I gave it to her and made her feel like negative two, <laughs> I'd have had the smoke for his ass, too. Right. So this is when she really turns into a pick Misha um, because the girl is confused and wants to know what the issue is. And Renika says that she's not going to let this ruin their meeting and feels it's, you know, some old bitch that he, you know, he's using. And when he finally comes out, Renika runs into his arms and is crying and telling him how much she loves him. Uh, I'm going to need my money back. I'm going to need my money back, homie. I said, that's how you know she needed some D. It was guess it, what? Yeah, keep keep on messing with me. You it was giving right the girl. It was uh, it was giving the uh girl from uh Force Shanti. That's how she would act. So, Asanta says that he first went to prison at eighteen and was there till he was twenty five, and then got locked up again. I think is how I understood the story. Um, or no, he was there till he was twenty four and then got locked up again when he was twenty five. Oh, I- I skipped over all of that. I don't I was, know. I was, um, I, was, but, I was 38 hot. I, listen, all I, all, I just had all these scenarios going off in my head. That's, you are so <laughs> funny. So Asanta says that he's ready to be with Renika the rest of his life. Renika says she's going to leave it alone. You see how he didn't even look at the camera when he said it? Right. He was, yeah, he was looking down at the that girl. That was a damn lie. And then we also see Renika and uh, we will also see Renika and Asanta on Love After Lockup. So, Yeah. He would have got locked back up that night. I'd have been like, listen, you better call whoever to get me my money back. And when I got it back, find yourself a ride, sir. No. Letitia and Key. Um, Letitia got back late. This seems like it's something that she always does. Mm-hmm. Our Marsha was watching the kids. She even cleaned the kitchen for her. And she feels this is the perfect time to get in her ass about how she spilled the beans about the ring. Now, our Marsha said, you know, it looked like it was expensive, more than it was supposed to cost. So right. she went through the statements and told him. And she was like, and that was my area before you came along. Well. Now, she said, I understand you're his secretary, but I'm his wife. And I don't appreciate you going behind my back. I didn't even get a chance to tell him, girl, you wasn't going to tell him, girl, stop it. 
She said, it's my job to observe. It's giving Aunt Marsha is not going to stop. So, right. <laughs> um, and basically she said, she's Marcia, uh, look, Aunt Marsha said, that is my nephew, not you, boo. Exactly. Um, she said she's going to um, talk to her husband, let him know that his wife comes first and everything needs to go through her. Aunt um, Marsha said, all right, Nisi Poo. <laughs> right. Okay, so, girl. Right, that's exactly what it was given. Did she try to tell her homegirl that she's going to get her taken off the accounts? And, I don't think so. Good luck. So, Especially now that he don't trust, he know he can't trust you. Uh-huh. So apparently she kept the ring, um, but removed Keith from her tax business and Keith is to be released in 2025. So Brittany, <laughs> Brittany has a visit with Kirok scheduled and because of the drama with EB, she realizes that she's going to be late. So she just calls him from her car. She tells him that EB is always accusing her of something. And then she asks Kirok if he asked EB to stalk her. And he basically says no, but says that EB is his, EB is his eyes on the outside for the most part. And, you know, since he's inside. So she reminds Kirok that she's in a relationship with him, not EB, and doesn't want his opinions. And then uh, basically she goes on to say that she learned from that whole situation with Carla and doesn't want to do that anymore and says that, you know, she's just going to trust whatever she's going to trust God and she's going to trust whatever he had to say. And they supposed to trust each other. And Kira and Kira basically said, well, that's good for you. Right. I'm glad it ain't over here. Right. Ain't shit changing. <laughs> and so Brittany goes uh, then to talk with the doctor about IVF and her and Kira are really trying to have this baby. Um, she reveals that she only has one working, I guess, fallopian tube. Uh, then the doctor tells her that that won't matter as long as Kirok's uterus, I guess, is good. So then Kirok calls and asks the doctor basically what the procedure is or what they need to do. The doctor tells him the first thing is coming off the hormones he's currently on, um, and which I guess is testosterone, um, and is preventing his ovaries from functioning. He lets him know that through this process, he's going to develop breasts mm -hmm. and his voice may change. Not the not the ovaries, the the two the fallopian tubes. He's the one that's producing the egg. She would ha she's the ovary. So she's holding the the egg. I guess. Whatever. <laughs> um, so Kirok's obviously not okay with that under any circumstances. And so the doctor says, well, there's no way that he can collect eggs without him coming off of it. So Brittany asked him to think about, you know, think about it. And Kirok says absolutely not we're not doing yeah, that think about um it. and so Brittany gets emotional and you know just wants to make sure if she can she can carry her own baby um and basically feels like if she has a baby with just her dna that basically he he won't treat them like it's his own and he basically tries to reassure her and let her know that even if they adopted that would still be his kid so then um she asks about the procedure being that her fallopian tube is closed and the doctor explains that he would just go, I guess, from the side. Hopefully she ovulates from the side that's open, I think is what he's hoping for, or else she'll have to, I guess they'll have to take her egg and then take it to a lab and inseminate it and then transfer. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. And it's not cheap. And it's a long mm -hmm. process. Well, not long, but it's lengthy. So he leaves him to talk about himself and Brittany gets upset because, you know, she wants to carry her baby. Um, and tells, you know, he tells her that they need to think on it some more. And Brittany says that she loves Kirok, but she also wants to carry her, her child. So Brittany and Kirok are still discussing their baby plans when the episode ends. And they will all, we will also see them on Love After Lockup. And I said, well, okay, girl. Good luck to y'all. Don't get caught up in Alexandria. <laughs> you took it right out my mouth. I was just about to say, we'll see her in Alexandria. You stupid. <laughs> Delulu, Savannah. Um, she really thinks that she's going to walk into this jail and get married. And I really wish this girl would stop telling us about her bowel movement. She's forever talking about how much she pooped and how much she got to poop. I don't know what's wrong with this girl. So on the way to the jail. covered it because I didn't even realize it. I said I wouldn't even realize it because that's it, how it just, it just it, it, it annoys me. It annoys me. She's constantly talking about how much she poops. Girl, nobody cares. So on the way to the jail with this dress and this veil on, she is really taking, she's like really talking herself up 
and making herself think that this is really a possibility. So this girl said, how could he say no to me? Like he hasn't already. Well, that's cool. So of course she comes out the jail, disappointed. She throws the flowers out the window. Um, she said, I don't need any of this wedding stuff. Girl, you big dummy, we need that. <laughs> um, <laughs> she said she put the marriage papers in front of him and told him she signed them already. And now it's his turn. This man laughed and told her no. It was the fact that she went and spent money on a dress for this. Why? I, mean, I didn't even expect it to be that. I hope she rented it. Would you imagine? It, it, didn't even, it really don't even look like a wedding dress. It looked like something she could have got from Walmart or something, Target or something. Really? Could you imagine him laughing in her face? Like, no, it's not happening. He pushed that back. And... I don't even see him laughing. She said, she, <laughs> she said he laughed. She, she said he chuckled and told her no. Like, like no, uh, like the fact that you thought it was I, funny. I think that, it, at least in my opinion, I think that we all know that she's delusional, and what actually happens versus what she makes up in her head are two totally different things. So I don't think. It, I mean, I would think even still, if he laughed, that's not. It's not like a great thing that's like no it's not a great thing but what like, it's like you're funny you really thought this was going to happen today i don't believe that because of all the sh that she said and she was like oh i realized that i'm forcing myself on his mother and i'm forcing myself on him that's basically what oh, you, th you think that's you think that's what he said i think her. that's what he told her when she sat down at that table so to me i don't think there was any laughter again but she's delusional so what she's going to tell us Versus what mm -hmm. actually happened, because cameras weren't there. We'll yeah, never, we'll never find out. Yeah, right. I wish I could have been a fly on the wall. Right, but she said that afterwards they had a great visit. I don't know how you go from getting a no in a wedding dress to a great visit, but happens, I guess, when you're Delulu. So she said she told him and showed him what she wants, but he doesn't want the same thing, and he made that very clear. I just hope it's clear this time because. He made it clear all season long. I don't understand. She said that she feels like she's finally learning a lesson. She can't push herself onto people like she did to him and his mom because she still didn't get what she wanted, like Trey said. So he calls her while she's driving and he told her, I can't believe you really came in here with a wedding dress on and thought I was going to sign them damn papers. He said it means a lot that you're willing to commit yourself to me at my lowest point in my life when I have nothing to offer. And I love your determination. And, and you're still wanting to be devoted to me. But it's still a no. <laughs> it's still a no. Right. <laughs> um, but he says that he wants to be able to take care of her and their future family. Listen, you know what, Jake? I had a lot of respect for you. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. I had well, a lot of respect. Here you go, lying. Because you were being, I, I thought you were being honest. Okay. If you just need a pen pal, I'm sure they have plenty. Plenty. But you know what? It could be because she's working on this uh, commutation for him. So who knows? Who knows? He's clearly benefiting somehow. Um, and she said, you know what? That makes perfect sense. I just can't wait. So she decided that his daily dedication is enough for her and says, Ugh. they'll be married one day in their own way. <laughs> uh huh. So basically, yeah, she's still working on Jake's commutation and um, she's hoping to get a ring by 2024. She is wasting all her good years for this man. You think she got good years? <laughs> The few that she got left, yeah. Well, you know what? There's somebody for everybody. So Right. That was pretty much the finale of Love During Lockup. We thank you so much, Shay Squad, for joining us for this review slash recap. If you have not already, please, please, please make sure that you hit that like button. You comment. You subscribe. And you hit the notification bell. And make sure you're following us on all the platforms, the TikTok, the Twitter, the Facebook, and the IG. And yeah, guys, we will catch you. Actually, we won't catch you next week. I guess the next time we see you got lovely people, 
It'll be for Love After Lockup. But please go binge watch all of the reviews. Go make sure you like them. You're caught up on all the shadiness of it all. And if you comment, we'll still respond. So right, drop in the comments too. Okay. And yeah, and go on over to all our other videos. Jump into something else. I'm sure we'll find something else that you like. But yeah, love you guys. And we'll catch you for Love After Lockup. See you later. Good night.